Good evening. God bless you and welcome to a Reset Prayer this wonderful evening. This is, interestingly, the beginning of the second half of 2020. And this is, this is remarkable and so timely for us today to be gathered on the first day of July 2020 to spend time to pray and to commit the second half of this year into the hands of Almighty God. Isn't it amazing when we think about how time really has gone? I mean, just think about the fact that it seems just like yesterday when we said Happy New Year to one another. And here we are in July racing towards December. But you know, I am fully persuaded that the God of heaven and earth who started this journey with us will ensure that he brings us to great fulfillment at the end of the season. So welcome again to this evening's special service, Lighthouse in the cloud of his presence. And wherever you are, I want you to just reach out to your devices and I want you to click the share button, create a watch party, invite your friends, and just get everybody on board so that we can spend time with the word and spend good time praying this evening. I want you to join me in the song of worship, and I'm sure that you all know it. It says, light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes and let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. And we'll just sing this song together as we get into what God has for us tonight. All right. Light of the world, you stepped out into darkness. Open my eyes. Let me see beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came, humbly you came, to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. That's why I came to say, here I am to worship, and here I am to bow down, and here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together one. To me, here I am, here I am to worship, and here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, and you're all together worthy, and all together lovely and all together wonderful to me I never know how much it costs 
to see my sin upon the cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon the cross. And I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon the cross and I'll never know how much it cost you to see my sin upon the Here I am to worship, and here I am to bow down, and here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, and all together one. Wonderful to me. Just want to honor you this evening, Father, and just thank you for everything that you are, for your goodness and for your grace. Thank you, mighty Jesus. Thank you. I never know how much it cost to see my sin upon the cross. But I thank you all the same because you gave all that you had just to save me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You are worthy of my praise and my life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Well, if you're just joining us, welcome to this critical and crucial time in your life, in our life, as individuals, as a people, and as a nation also. Welcome to the second half of 2020. And I want to say this, I honestly believe that this second half of the year will be better than the first. I am persuaded deep within my heart that this second half will be better than the first. And I, I just want you to believe with me, even as we begin to look to God's word. And the first thing I do want us to do is to give God thanks, to thank him for this first half of the year, to thank him for all that he has done, all that he is doing, and especially to thank him even for that which he is to do. Thanksgiving is extremely important and critical. A heart of gratitude touches God in such a way that he releases himself to do much more in our lives. Ten lepers came to Jesus, and if gratitude didn't mean anything, he wouldn't have responded to them when one came to give thanks. They had leprosy. He said, go show yourselves to the priest. As they went, they were healed. But only one came back. And when he came to Jesus to simply say, thank you for healing me. Jesus said, I thought there were 10 of you. You came as a team. You came as a pack. But only one returned to give glory to God. There may be hundreds and thousands of people all over the planet today. But I want you to be that only one. If, if at all there will be anyone giving God thanks, you will be that only one that returned to give God thanks. 
And to him Jesus said, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. In other words, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, there was no sign of leprosy because leprosy would deform your, your, your limbs and, and, and your body. But there was no sign of leprosy for him. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 3, Paul was a man who constantly loved to give thanks. He said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing. That he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all. Because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and in my defense and the confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of grace. Paul was writing to the Philippians and he said to them, I constantly thank God every time I think of you. And his focus was this. I am confident, I thank God, I am confident of one thing. That he that began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus. I like the way, you know, Paul embeds spiritual truth in his vocabulary. Referring to the Philippians, he called them a good work. You know, sometimes when we look at ourselves and even what we are experiencing in life, we tend to discredit and disqualify ourselves. The people who look and say, I don't think I'm a good work. I'm a bad work. But you know, it's not what you think in the eyes of God, as we find in the scripture, you are a good work. You may not look it yet. It may not be evident yet, but you are a good work. And he said, he that began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus. So this evening, I want you to begin to thank God for what he has started to do in your life, even from January 2020. Because Paul is saying what he began to do is a good work. And he will complete it even at the end of this season. So I want us to begin to give God thanks wherever we are this evening. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you because you called us a good work. We thank you because what you began to do is a good work. Even if it doesn't look like it, it is a good work. We thank you. Makerebo shata la bos kali pakataya. Lebrando ske pakashike yebogo siketea. Thank you because what you started, you will finish. Lebaka shakaya kalabregedus kalapakataya. Thank you because the path you set us upon is a good path path in spite of what may be happening on the face of the earth happening to us as individuals it is a good path you do not set us on bad paths but you set up on perfect paths and you will perfect it you will complete it thank you mighty father what you started in me you will finish what you began in me you will finish what you began in through the expression of my hands you will finish I thank you father I thank you I thank you because what you started in my family you will finish what you started in my ministry you will finish what you started with lighthouse even in this season you will finish you will finish what you started and I thank you for it. I want you to begin to thank him for divine protection. God has been faithful to you. God has been faithful to 
to me in the midst of a pandemic we find ourselves whole we find ourselves complete i know that some people have gone through a covid experience but thank god because you are alive thank god because even when you went through it he healed you thank god because in the midst of infirmity he healed you Thank him for sustaining you. Thank him for protecting you. From a thousand troubles. Sometimes we don't even know the things God delivered us from. Because before they happened, he stopped it and nipped it in the bud. Do you know how many times it might have stopped death? In your life. From laying hold upon you in this season. And you didn't even know it. Give him thanks. 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 Palaka Soto. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us. Thank you because you are a safe place. Thank you because in you we live, in you we move, and in you we have our being. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you for keeping me. I want you to begin to thank him for keeping you, for sustaining you. For providing for you, Macalabroso Tola, Bracashi Kelebrigabega Sikete Shekelebregeduska, Yemaka Shatala Pregabega Sukatola, Lema Kabaga Shatakaya Kalabregeduska. If he began protecting you and he began keeping you and began sustaining you, he will also perfect it, he will complete it in the name of Jesus. Thank him for shielding you from accident of all kinds all kinds motor accidents domestic accidents gas explosions and no manner of tragedies. Yakalabo seketu shala pakata. Le makasa kala pregebega shikala pregebega duska la pakataya. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for shielding me. You've been my shield, and my fortress, you've been my defense, you've been the hedge around me, for thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I'm grateful, constantly and consistently grateful. Through all the paradoxes, even of this season, I am grateful and I am thankful. For your hand of favor and your hand of grace upon my life. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, Father. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for saving us from all kinds of disasters. Thank you for mighty deliverances we knew nothing about. Thank you for deliverance from evil and wicked men who schemed and plotted against us when we didn't know. Thank you for, for preservation from sickness and disease. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for shielding us. We give you thanks in the name of Jesus for shielding us for this first half of the year. The second thing I want us to focus our attention upon, and most times we ignore in times and moments of prayer or even as we journey through a particular time or a particular season, is the importance and significance of our spiritual growth. Every Christian, every child of God must walk on growing spiritually and deepening the spiritual roots. Your growth as a Christian cannot be overemphasized. It is important that we be conscious on a daily basis because this is the 
pathway for every child of God. Your spiritual growth is important. In 1 Peter chapter 2, and I read scriptures to guide you to understand what I'm talking about. Peter writes and says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. As newborn babes desire. So he speaks about the new birth within the kingdom of God. And he says, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. He emphasizes the need to grow. And he says, what you feed upon is the sincere pure, not adulterated word of God. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14, Paul, speaking about the church and the local assembly, highlights the reason why in the body of Christ there are apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers. It is for edifying the saints it is for preparing us for the work of the ministry. It is for empowering us and releasing us to push forward the frontiers of the kingdom of God. But then he goes on to cause us to realize that the reason why they teach, they train, and they instruct us is that we henceforth be no more children who are tossed to and fro and so the mark of children, remember that Peter speaks about babies. Paul is speaking about children, and children are grown to some degree. And the mark of children is they are tossed to and fro. By what? Every wind of doctrine. They're constantly moving and say, hey, there's a new revelation here. Oh, there's a new truth here. Oh, there's new this here. Oh, let's move from this church to another church. They are teaching this. It says they are children. Tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. It says they are moved by the slight of men. They are deceived by the craftiness of men who are lying in wait to deceive. So children are easily deceived. I remember my story, and, and I share this, my experience as a young child. I had an uncle who was living with us. And every time, you know, I was fond of him, and every time that you know, my meals, it was meal time, and my meal was served. I always loved to eat with him. So when I go with my, with my meal, whether I was rice with meat in it, when he watches me eating and he eyes my rice, if you get what I'm saying, he would then say to me, Shola, you can't put that meat in, in my mouth. And for me, that was somebody daring me. Say, I know you cannot put it in my mouth. And stupidly, I would take the meat and put it in his mouth and he will eat it and swallow it and I'll be crying. Now, it's easy to deceive a child. And so, if we remain children spiritually, there are all kinds of wolves in sheep clothing that would deceive us. And if you look at what's happening on the earth today, you know, even in the church with the pandemic, there are many voices out there. Some are saying 5G is, is what is causing coronavirus. Some are saying Jesus is coming anytime now. Mark of the beast. All kinds of things are coming out. And people are easily deceived by these things. Those who are deceived are children. They are not adult in the scheme of things. So if you're there and you're one who is swayed by these things... It shows where you are spiritually. Tossed to and fro. Unstable even in their understanding. But Hebrews chapter 5 says, Strong meat belongs to them. And so it's using different metaphors to define the word of God. It's using milk, for example, to define the word of God. It's speaking about the state your state spiritually to define where you fall into. And then he says, strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use or practice 
have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So there's the baby, there's the child, and then there's strong meat for the man. Those who, by reason of experience, by reason of using the word of God, practicing it, can discern between good and evil and are no longer deceived. So where do you fall? You see, that is why it is important for us to understand the need for spiritual growth. And here are certain pointers that are going to help you to know whether you truly are growing or you are not. To know your spiritual state. Number one, do you have a hunger for the word of God? Do you love the word? Do you love to hear the word of God? Is there a, a deep hunger when, when you don't hear the word of God or read scripture, you feel like you're dying inside? If you do not have a hunger for the word of God, it shows that you've got a problem with your spiritual growth. Do you have a hunger for righteousness? Is there a hunger for you for righteousness? Are you concerned about your relationship with God? Do you, do you love to see righteousness uh, manifesting itself, exuding itself? Do you like to see righteousness on the streets? Do you like to see righteousness in society? Do you seek to, 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 to maintain that state that God has, has blessed you with because we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Do you love fellowshipping with God? And do you love fellowshipping with other brethren as well? John says, truly our fellowship is with God the Father, with his son Jesus Christ, and with one another. What is your love meter reading? So your, the, the, the state of your love towards the brethren, towards people, towards humanity is also a reflection of your spiritual state and your spiritual growth. By extension, do you find forgiving people who hurt you easy? Or are you one who holds grudges for long periods of time and you, you, you say, I, I, I won't forgive you? Is a reflection of where you are spiritually. Do you love prayer or you run away from prayer? And people say, Oh, let's pray. You say, I'm coming. Or do you, are you excited to, to pray, to just pray in the spirit, to just exercise yourself in the spirit? Does it excite you? Do you enjoy serving? Serving other people. Being a blessing to people. Serving in a local community. Serving and pushing the frontiers of the kingdom. Or do you endure it? Something that says, you say, Kai, honestly, I'm tired. Is a reflection of your spiritual state. Do you enjoy talking to people about Jesus and just sharing what is done in your lives with people, the story and the testimonies of your life? Do you enjoy it or do you endure it? Now, as I've read these pointers, I hope you are gauging yourself to see where you are spiritually because this is going to form a basis for our prayer. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1, Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. I repeat that. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. That means that it is possible, first of all, not everybody operates at the same level of grace and peace. Let's establish that. There are different dimensions and levels of grace and peace. For some people, their peace is so low that they are easily troubled and perturbed. For some people, their peace is great. Great is your peace. That's the kind of peace Jesus had when he was in the boat. That even though there were storms, he was sleeping. But you, what happens to you when you're going through the storms of life? Do you have great peace? And I'll show you how it functions. Peter said, grace and peace can be multiplied. 
If it can be multiplied, it means it is multiplied to some, it is added to others. If we use mathematical, you know, expressions. For, so for some people, grace and peace is added. For other people, they operate at a great dimension of grace and peace. But you know, the key is in there because it says it is multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. Remember that your spiritual growth is a function of what you eat spiritually. Desire the sincere milk of the word. Now, so the same way grace and peace is multiplied to you through the knowledge of God, the more of God you know, the more of Jesus you know, the more grace and peace is multiplied to you. Now, how do you know except you engage God's word? How do you know except you spend time communing with the Father in prayer, in psalms, in hymns, spiritual songs, in thanksgiving? If not, you cannot operate at multiplied grace and peace. Same Peter writes, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. It says, you therefore, beloved, since you... Now this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness. Since you know this beforehand, beware that you fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. To grow is to have it added to you. But I read about a dimension earlier, multiplied grace and peace. He said you can grow in the grace and grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it is possible for us to operate at a higher plane of grace and peace and that is hinged upon our growth in the knowledge of our Savior Jesus Christ. I want you to begin to pray right now. You know, these things matter to the quality of life you live. Your spiritual growth matters to what you are able to receive from the Father. Remember the story of the prodigal son. He had two sons. One son was a babe in Christ. If, if you understand what I mean was like a babe in Christ. The other son was a child. And I want to spend time to just share this with you, so stay with me. It was the child that came to his father, who had just discovered his father's inheritance and said, give me the portion of goods that pertains to me. And he went and wasted it because he didn't have the capacity to manage it. That's the child. But when he came to himself, through all that experience, he matured and he became a man. And he began to express the reasoning of a man. He said, wait a minute. My father has so much. And his servants are coming better. Um, they are living better than I am. I will go back to my father and I know how to use my words right. You see, maturity is, is also shown in your ability to Use right words to gain access. So he says, I will go to my father and I will say, I've sinned against heaven and earth and I've come back to you. And he said, worst case scenario, and I'm paraphrasing it, my father will make me as one of the servants. So the child who went out came back as a man. That's why the father will put a ring on his finger, meaning you can seal and stamp anything in this house. You went as a child, you're back as a man. But now here's, here's the infant, the babe in the house. Who would not come to the party? And when his father saw him and said, hey, what's going on? He said, eh, you know, daddy, me, I've been a good boy all this while. Uh, you didn't even give me anything. That's a babe that is speaking. So the child was able to gain access because of his understanding of the father's position and also the father's disposition. He knew the father's position. He knew the father's disposition. But he went because he didn't have the maturity. He wasted the goods. Now he came back. A great robe was put upon him. And the ring was put upon his hand. The one who was a babe at home 
No, the Bible doesn't tell us he has a ring on his finger. So this is, this is what you need to know, that your spiritual growth positions you for access into the deep treasures of heaven and into the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So right now, I want you to begin to pray and say, Father, by your spirit and by your word, birth a new hunger on the inside of me, a hunger for truth, a hunger for spiritual things, a hunger for your word, a hunger for prayer. You will need these attributes and this hunger as we journey into the second half of this year. It's going to be very critical for you. A hunger for truth, a hunger for your word. Lebra kabaga shakataya a desire for prayer. Lebra kasi kela brge shike tu skala pakata. Remo kosi kela brge brge shike le brge brge shike te. Le brge brge shike le brge brge shike te ke shike te. Le brge kabaga shakata shakala bata. Le brge shakataya by your spirit laba shakataya by your word even by the word you're hearing today that there will be a bursting of a hunger a desire to know God more. More, to know his word more kalabaka shataya to grow bakali bakasakata shakala bregedush kalapakata libre ke seto lo pakashataya libre gabaga shandele ke soto birth the hunger on the inside of me bali greco soto kolo prakashakataya libre gabaga shikala bregobogo shikala bregebegede lebogo sokotoya a hunger for a deeper knowledge of the things of God, of the things of the Spirit. Cause a thirsting on the inside of me. Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me. And the waters that I will give him will be in him. A well of water springing into everlasting in life. Yebaka Shataya John 4. By the time we get to John chapter 7, he says if you thirst, ye kalabrigabagashiketa, you come to me. Lebaka Shakataya, out of your innermost being, lebrando Sakataya, will flow rivers of living water. In John 4, it's a well of water. In John 7, it's rivers of living water. Different dimensions of operations, different frequencies, different levels of impact. Ya kalabagashiketa Cause a thirsting lebakasota la bregedushka la bagadaya. A thirsting for more rabakasite. Lemba doske prakashaka libosoto. Prala kasike la bregeshiketo. A hunger father la bregesokotoya. Le bregebegeshika la bregabogo seke la bregeshiketeya. Le bregabagasaka la bregebegeshika la bregebegeduska la bakataya. Paul writing to the Ephesian church says, I do not cease to make mention of you that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him lord give me give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you that we may know you Pray this night and ask God to help you to walk closely with him every day of, of this second half of the year. That by his grace, he will sustain you. He will cause you to walk closely with him. That in this second half, you won't neglect his presence. That you won't neglect his presence. Mangele bosha. Libre gebege dosha. Kaya kalabre gebege dushke le posa. Libre ge seke le brege bege sheke le brege bege dosa. Yeke le brege bege shika la bahasa taya. That you will learn to practice his presence. Yemoko sike le brege bege shike. That his presence will be ever strong in your life. Balaka shata. Bolo seke po shika tosa kalapata. Yeah. 
Librege sondo kolo brege bege shiketu. Pari kasonda kalabra shata. Librege sota kalabrege shikalabo sata. Rindo so kalibra nosha. Yamanga se kalabrege bege dus kalabaga shata. Librege dosa kaya kalabrege bege shuta. This is important. This is critical. This is crucial for you in this season. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Mighty Father, we thank you. A closer walk with you. We desire, mighty Father, that we will have a closer walk with you. Our desire, Marabo Sakata, is to be closer to you every single day, every single moment. As we journey into the second half of this year, let it be so, mighty Father. Let it be so in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. And we'll read verses 13 and 14. And we will read verse 16 as well. Profound scripture. And I was preparing for this service. God took me to this scripture and asked me to share it so that we can pray it and we can see a fulfillment of the things that are in here in our lives in this season, second half of 2020. It says the Lord will march out like a champion. Like a warrior, he will stir up his zeal with a shout, he will raise the battle cry and will triumph over his enemies. You know, that includes COVID-19. He will triumph over it. For a long time, I have kept silent. I've been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp, and pant. Verse 16. I will lead the blind by the ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. Oh, Lord. You know, this, this is just like, man, we're ready to walk terrains we've never been before. Unfamiliar paths. It means God will take you to new dimensions. It means it will take you from a field you have been accustomed to. And it will plant you in another field. But because he's the one doing it, you will have all it takes to profit, to advance, to, to do exploits within it. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. That's what he's about to do. I will lead them along unfamiliar paths. And I like this. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them. I will make the rough places smooth. Smooth. These are the things I will do and I will not forsake them. Now, this is a time and that's, that's why we had to pray concerning our spiritual hunger. This is the time to draw close to God and to fine tune our spiritual senses because of what he has said he will do. I will lead the blind by the ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths. And I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them. And make the rough places smooth. These things I will do and I will not forsake them. Now, I want you to just connect with this passage we've read. And say as we pray. And as we pray, just keep just keep regurgitating this even as you pray in the spirit say father as you've declared it let it be unto me according to your word on familiar territory paths that you have not known it will turn darkness into light before you the rough places will begin will become smooth let's begin to just 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 imbue it into our spirits marabaka shikale brigebege shikale brigebege dus kalabaka 
It shall be yes and amen. Marabosa kalabrge bege duske. Ye kalabrge bege duske. Kalabrge bege sike teke shotolo. Manga labrge bege sike. Kalabrge bege sike. Kalabrge bege dos kalapakata. Lebrge sike. Kalabrge bogo sike. Kalabrge sike tana. Lebrge bogo sike toso kolo prakapashata. Lebrge baga singe. Lebrge sike. Lebrge dos kalabagede. Riba kasakaya kalabrge sike tosha. Lebrge bege sike. Lebrge bege sike. Lebrge bege de. On familiar places, ya kalabaga seketeya, libriga bogo shika, libriga bege sukotosha, strange pathways, maya kalabaga seketoya, ways that I have not known, baligari bogo seke, libriga bege shikadeya. Turning the darkness into light, Yakalaba Shakataya, making the rough places smooth, Marigadosa, Marigadosa, Yakalabo Shakati Kalabosa, Librigabega Shekalabrigabega Seketosha. I say yea and amen. Yes, Yakalabasha. Yes to the, your word. Yes to what you revealed. You will lead me by ways I've not known. Yangalabo Shakataya, Libra Gabaga Sakataya, you lead me along unfamiliar paths. Mangalabo Shiketosa, Ye Kalabro Soto, be it to me according to your word. Ye Makashata, the darkness will be turned into light. Marabo Shekelebregebe Shoto, rough places will become smooth. Ye Makasata Yalabosha, these are the things you will do. Le Makashakaya Kalabaga Soto, and I agree. Mangalabo Shataya, I say Amen. Mangalabo Shekelebregebe Siketola. Le brigabega shito sokolo prega shiketese yegala brigabogo shakala brigabega siketosha le mosoto prakafa salabashanda ri mosoto lo brega sikala brosha le brigabogo sikala brosha kali pakotosta parana sali ketoso le moshaka yagala brigabega duska le brigabega shiketea le makasaka ya kala brigabega duska on familiar territory mayanga labaga shiketosa in second corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 paul said when i came to trust to preach the gospel a door was opened to me by the lord if god is saying to us is leading us into unfamiliar territory then we need to say to him lord open the doors yekelebo shakataya into these unfamiliar territories open the doors in this second half of the year open the doors and position me accurately Mm, Baraka Sata, for these new opportunities, Baro Takaya, position me accurately, Barandosa, 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 Barandosa. Barandosa, 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 Bradeke, Broda Kasika Luta, Bradeke Suka La Praka Shakatosa, Yengele Bogo Sike La Bregebege Shiketosa, Yengolo Bogo Sike La Bregebege Shike La Bregedo, Le Bregebege Shike La Bregebege Seketosa, Le Brege Sike Yaka La Bregeba Sando Lataya, Le Mogo Sike La Bregebege Sike La Bregebege Dosa, Accurate Positioning, Balande, Ye Manga Sike La Bregebege Shike La Bregebege Pray right now, Lord, as we journey into the second half of this year, let the lines fall for me in pleasant places. Psalm 16 says that Yakalabosha, you are the portion of my inheritance. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. I have a good inheritance. In this second half of the year, Father, the lines will fall for me in pleasant places. It will fall for me in pleasant places. Maranosa, Baradegeshi, Kalabregebosa, Kalabanshande. 
ye mangala bo sakaya kala brigebege sheketosa li brigebege shekele brigebege sheketosh let the lines fall in pleasant places marabaga shekele brigebege sikaya kala brigebedo ri baba 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 sakaya kala brigeshekede i want you to pray right now and say father download divine ideas into my spirit ye makasha kaya kala brigebege dush kala baka sakataya ideas rule the world maro sekele brigedushka when the father stood at the at the at, at, at the horizon of the universe and he began to declare light be everything that we saw was in him as ideas he had an idea of the restructuring of the earth he had an idea of the plants he had an idea of the fish he had an idea of the way that our earth should function and he decreed those things and they came to pass lord download divine supernatural ideas in my heart in this season ya kalabaka sata lebra gabaga shikala brigebege seketosha la mo saninda losa brande kesto bali gerebo shaka ya kalabosa libregedosa kalabashatala ningele bro sikele brato sakila prake sula prafakasheto tekoso kolo prakalise ninga lisha bradege lusa brava gedosha lebra kasaka ya kalabrigebege Seketosa, le brande sekile prege seketosa, le maraba sakala brage dosha kalabaka sakataya, le brage baga shakataya. And Lord, as you burst those ideas and cause them to 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 be incubated in my spirit, ye baka shakataya. Also, Father, send the resources, ye raba sakala brage dushka la brage dushka. That will move them from just being a seed, Yagalabasata, until they become reality. Mangalebosha, human resources, Bakala Bregedushka Labakasata, earthly resources, Mangalebogoshikele Bregeduska Labakataya, resources of mental capacity, Paro Sakile Bregeshikele Bregeduska, spiritual resources, the angels and the forces of the spirit of heaven, Yekelebo Sakataya, walk in consonance and concert with me Yabakasakataya, to cause all the things you've decreed and all the things you've spoken to come to pass on familiar places Yekelebo Sakataya incredible impossible places becoming incredible places Parakasakala Bregeshikele Bregodoska Labahaya Remoko sokolo braga shakataya kalabrindos. Ye galabaga shakatala brage siketosha. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we just begin to give God thanks for tonight and for the for the joy and the privilege to pray such things, our desires, deep desires, spiritual desires, relevant desires to the Father today. Balabasa kataya, we thank you, Father. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, mighty Father. We bless you. We thank you. We give you praise and glory. Bali ke soto pashata. Bali ke soto pashatike. Bali ke soto mavradesko lo bagashata. Thank you, Lord. 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 Father, we thank you for tonight. But thank you because we've simply been instruments in your hands, causing us to pray your desire concerning us to you so that you can respond to us by positioning us accurately, by causing in us a deep desire and a hunger to grow to know you more for spiritual truth and for spiritual depth. Father, we thank you for that which you've shown us this evening. You're bringing us into unfamiliar places. Even the blind will be brought in. We thank you, Father. We thank you, mighty Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you because every darkness will be turned to light that's what you said in your word. And Lord, we trust for a fulfillment of these things. 
and we thank you because you first loved us. Thank you, Father, for hearing us tonight. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow, that has been such a wonderful, wonderful time together, connecting in the Spirit and connecting with the Spirit of the Father and just praying needful prayer points to position ourselves for the second half of the year. I look forward to seeing you again next week, Wednesday. And next week, Wednesday, will also be a profound time. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow because tomorrow we're going to be having the conversation. But before we end all of this, it is good that we honor the Lord with our substance even today. And so just watch the announcement that will be coming on your screen and I will join you and we'll wrap up this service together right afterwards. Hallelujah. Giving is an act of worship. It is time for us to honor the Lord with our offerings, tithes and gifts. As you well know, this part of the service completes our worship and positions us to activate God's increase upon our lives. Scripture says that we should honor God with everything we own. Give him the first and the best. Your barns will burst and your wine vats will brim over. We have our banking coordinates showing on the screen right now. I'm sure that as you honor the Lord through your giving, the Lord will honor you and cause your bands to be filled with plenty. I believe he will do that because he fulfills his word. And every time we give, we activate a spiritual principle that heaven honors and the Lord God Almighty will honor you. Now, tomorrow, and so we've got, to, we've got to start with tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're having the conversation. And, you know, tomorrow's conversation is really going to be an explosive one. And I have a special guest, Christy Bature, who is going to be on that broadcast. And we're going to be looking at breaking destructive patterns. You know what I found out? Many times when you look at your life and you look at where you are, you can point back to something that happened that changed or defined a pattern in your life. You know, today when we look at our world and we look at what's happening with respect to rape, we're looking at sexual abuse, we're looking at all kinds of things. There are lots of people out there who are chained down because they were abused in their past and they found a destructive pattern that has held them bound. Some people are, are locked down to to pornography, and all kinds of vices. And you know, we're trusting God that whatever it is that, that has been a, a destructive pattern in your life, it will be broken. And we'll be taking time to pray for people tomorrow. So look forward to seeing you, same platforms, at 6 p.m. And on Sunday, join us again for another, another wonderful time in... God's presence. It is always a joy to bring God's word to you and to impact your life positively. I'm Shola Adesue, pastor of the Lighthouse. Thank you for joining us tonight. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. And tomorrow, get your friends, the flyers. Look, go to our Lighthouse page and share those flyers. Send it by WhatsApp messages to your friends and family because God is out to deliver people tomorrow. We look forward to seeing you. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Hallelujah.
COVID-19 is not a death sentence. When you feel symptoms, please be honest with your doctors. This will help them provide you with prompt diagnosis and treatment and also keeps them away from risk. Remember, they also have loved ones at home that need to be protected. I am a healthcare worker, a family physician, and a frontliner in the fight against COVID-19. I am Dr. Rosemary Akonle. I am Lighthouse. Take responsibility for your physical and mental health. Keep yourself in the right frame of mind by receiving information from verified and validated sources only. Don't panic. Stay calm and do the right thing. I'm a healthcare worker. My name is Dr. Yakubu Sambo, a frontliner in the fight against COVID-19. I am Lighthouse. As a scientist and a virologist, I work with viruses for an extended period of time. I do not fear COVID-19, but I respect it. I am Professor Lashley Abimiku. I am Lighthouse. I just want to use this opportunity to thank every health worker at the front line in the battle against the coronavirus. Because of the work you do, we are safer as a people, we're safer as families, we're safer as a nation. Thank you for what you do. I am Shola Adesoye. I am Lighthouse.